Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today I'm going to try my best to teach you about perspective. I'm not going to get caught up in a bunch of technical details. I'm going to try to show you how they actually work themselves out in the painting. It should be fun, and if you're enjoying these and you want to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now, as you can see, I'm using acrylics today. I've got my acrylic brushes, my palette, which is dirty from last time, and some of my acrylic paint. If you haven't seen it before, there it is. I enjoy using it. It's really nice. The colors are very bright kind of cheery. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you a road. So how, how often do we do roads? Actually, I'm going to do the bad stuff on the side and the good stuff on this side. How's that? Because I can show you the bad one first. How often do we do roads like this? Okay, I'm just using water here to thin it down. I'm not going to waste my good medium, <laughs> right? We do roads like this that snake back. Now you're thinking, well, what's wrong with that perspective? It gets smaller. Well, here's the thing, just like we learned before, it looks like we're in a helicopter looking down on it because it just doesn't expand. It's not big enough. When you're doing roads and paths, the proper perspective and perspective is, you know, it narrowing. Let me show you, you know, like that would be perspective, right? <laughs> I'm not good at drawing just so you know. So that's like a road going off into the distance, right? And there's your, you've probably seen this example before. And there's that horizon line and it vanishes in the distance in the desert or something, right? So that, and then you got your, your little poles like that, right? So that's good. But this path doesn't do that. See that, that, I'm gonna erase that. This path doesn't get big enough. So let me show you over here the proper way to do a path. What you wanna do is you wanna start, and I want you guys to get it about, well, I'm going to say about half the size of the canvas. The only time you don't do this is if you are doing a footpath that you want to look really, really small and you've got other items to scale, such as a big bush or a big, big tree that you would know is really big and right there in the foreground. But watch this. I want you to expand that path out very quickly and evenly as you go. And it takes up, oh, easily half. In fact, you know, way more than half. That way it See, creates better perspective. Look at the difference. See how that looks weird and, and flat? And this actually looks real. Yeah, that could be a, that's a sketch, you know, for a painting. You could just start your painting and you'd have a wonderful composition already. All right, next thing. And these are just the simple things, really. Let me do a house. Once you learn the most important thing, which is the horizon line and how objects work in your painting, the scale and size of them to create that perspective throughout the painting, the rest is not so hard. <laughs> Let me show you a house. Here's the wrong way to do a house. So you got your, you start with your eaves, it's looking good, your roof line. See that? Kind of flat. Now I'm gonna do one on the other side and I'll show you the differences as we go. When you're doing a house, although you don't always think about it, you can draw a little line. To, this is I think called a, a vanishing point or something like that. I'm not up on the names, you know me. I'm. I think it's gonna come all the way out there. There we go. See how this works? Everything needs to come back to that point. And then you can cut your building off at any point that you want. Oh, and look at that, look what happened. It looks like that building is going way, way back. Watch when you put a front door on this one, right there. Watch when you put a front door on this one. Do you see the difference? Do you see how this one, the, the front door helps you to kind of see, see it looks almost okay until you put the front door and then, oh, something's wrong with this house. See the difference on this house? This one shrinks back into the distance. So what you do is you just draw a little point and you do this in your imagination. You don't do it <laughs> on the painting. And you connect each line up just like I did. Even the bottom line, although it seems severe, look at how it actually looks good. Cool, huh? Just for the sake of the, uh, the lesson, let me just wipe this out for you so you can see it better. Mm. Actually, you could do this when you sketch and then just white out since we're using acrylic. Look at that. Mm. <laughs> that was actually really cool. So there you go. That's how you create perspective in the house. Now, if your house was up on a hill, then your line would be lower and everything would be sloping down to it. This is more kind of like the house is level and our, you know, you'd have some rolling hills and a foreground in your canvas would probably end somewhere right about there. I've just taken a couple seconds to create the next bad example. Just didn't think you'd want to see it. Have you ever seen a landscape that looks like that? If you've ever started, you know, kind of a beginner, started a painting, I bet you have. I know I've done a few like this. Here's the issue, there's no depth and you have to build depth 
with layers and you're creating a perspective throughout the entire landscape right just like a road how everything recedes as it goes toward that horizon let me show you the first problem was these trees and excuse the terrible looking evergreens <laughs> i know that you guys can paint evergreens or if you can't we got some good dvds on it these evergreens back here were a little too big but i realized that you know i don't want a painting that goes back 100 miles i want one that goes back just to the other side of the lake so i will make these have a little height to them maybe just not quite as much okay there we go over here we've got our trees look at the height difference i'm going to mark the top of those trees see how they're they all start below the background tree line let me mark the background tree line maybe in like red for you there's the background tree line okay do you see that so that's our background and there's our horizon would be right about here and then all of our foreground trees although they're much much bigger they end or they begin rather way lower that's that's not a good thing here's what needs to happen they need to grow if you want them that size that's okay you need to bring them up okay let me show you what i mean and obviously you use tones that you know darker tones in the foreground which i'll try to do as well but i'm going to do virtually the same size tree so i'll go down to right there just to show you it's not the tree it's the placement of the tree and i'm going to zigzag this color in like this and you'll see very quickly that I make it a little darker so it stands out there it is same exact size tree it's not the tree size it's the placement and look at that we're creating depth now we see a little perspective this tree is bigger those trees are f smaller as they recede just like the house check this house up see how it recedes it's the same idea even though this is not a man-made structure this is where it gets complicated this is the one that people it's not that it's complicated. It's just that you have to think about the perspective in a little different way because it's not so, it's not so plain to see. Not so plain to see. Cool, look at that, and they're creating more depth. Now, what would be better than over here, these little tiny evergreens, they, they look all right there. They look like little saplings. Let's do one just to show you that you can do it. I'm gonna put it right there. No, it has to start. It doesn't have to because it's a sapling, but I'm gonna make it start just above that tree line. And then right next to that sapling, what we can do is, check this out, we're going to do a big tree. And what this is going to do is give it a big wide base there. It's going to create more of that perspective. And honestly, again, I, I know there's a lot of technical rules on perspective. Here's what I do personally to keep myself from going too crazy <laughs> is I like for me to just kind of look at nature and go with it. I don't necessarily know. I mean, I know that this is all perspective stuff. I just don't know exactly all the right terms, but that's okay. You do it because this is exactly how it appears in real life. That's it. You're, you look at nature and you copy it. But the idea is creating some perspective as you go back so that it recedes. Watch this. You can, you can come well, I don't want to mess up our painting, but look, see how you can kind of draw those like, see that you can kind of imagine like a little road going back there. Everything works as far as the perspective, which is good. So just remember when you're doing a landscape, and this applies to any landscape or seascape actually, your waves in a seascape, is make sure that everything fits. You can kind of almost feel like you walk back in. Remember, if you, if you want to make things bigger, stick them up, you know, come up. Make sure you stick them over the horizon so that things recede from the top and the bottom like this. You don't want things receding where the tops are below the tops of the trees. Hope that makes sense. It's easier to see it than it is to explain it. But you see how everything recedes. I'm actually going to draw a line. I'm going to do it. I'm going to draw a line. Everything kind of recedes down like this. It, it doesn't have to be dead center on the canvas. It could be anywhere, you know, but just generally things tend to recede down into the painting. Pretty cool, huh? Well, I hope this short lesson on perspective has helped to clear things up just a little bit and also help you as you learn to create even more advanced paintings. I hope you had a great time. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.